This tutorial will walk you through creating a true color image in JS9. Once you've opened up JS9 in the activity portal, you can decide what object you're going to turn into a true color image. Remember, in order to create a true color image, you need to have taken three images, one with each of the three color filters, red, green, and blue. This isn't available for every object, but there are a number of options in the stars and nebula and galaxies list. To begin, select the drop-down menu, My List, and choose one of your images. I'm going to create a true color image of the Eagle Nebula. Next, it's time to process the image. Because this is a dim image, I'm going to select the Log Scale. The best trick to make your background dark when using the Log Scale is to set your low brightness limit equal to the pixel value you see when scrolling over the background. In this case, the background is somewhere in the mid-360s. Next, bring down the high brightness limit to bring out more of the detail. You'll have to play around with this. Once you're happy with the processing, make sure you double check what filter was used. To do this, go to the image dropdown and select Display Fit Header. You'll see filter listed, and in this case, I'm working with the image taken with the red filter. Now you can close the fits header and change your color map by selecting color from the drop down menu. Make sure to set it to the color corresponding to your filter. So in my case, this image was taken with a red filter, so I'm going to set the color to red. I'm now going to repeat this process for the other two images taken of the Eagle Nebula on the same night both the green and the blue filters. When I'm happy with processing of each, I'm going to double check which filter was used to take the image, then color it with that corresponding color map. Now that we have all three images processed and ready to go, we can combine the images by selecting RGB mode from the color drop-down menu. As you can see, they weren't taken at exactly the same time, so they're not quite lined up. Our next step will be to use the Shift tool at the bottom of the screen to move the images around. The Shift tool will move whichever image you selected last. Since I was working on the blue layer last, I'll start by aligning that image. As I click the arrows, you can see the blue image move around the screen. Once I've lined it up, I can move on to the next image. Now I can go back to my image list and select the red image from the drop-down menu. You might have to scroll back through to see the original image displayed uh, to figure out which one is the red. In my case, the last four numbers, which are part of the timestamp on my red image, are 3037. Now I can scroll to the top and select that image. When you switch images, it may appear to leave RGB mode, but don't worry. Just hit one of the arrows and you'll see the colors combine again. That looks pretty good. I'm going to label my image as well. You can do this by selecting Region, then Text. Double click on the text box, type in your text, then scroll to the bottom and hit the Apply button. Once you've aligned all your images and are happy with how it's all displayed, save it as a PNG, then upload it to the Udashina portal for everyone else to see.